Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, doing a movie review this week. This time it's a film that came out on March 21st, 1986. Was surprisingly enough, it's not officially released on DVD and Blu-ray, but I hope it does get some pretty soon, if it ever does. Mostly because of the rights issues. And it's been on VHS and Laserdisc for a very long time. In fact, it was actually part of the top 10 sales in the late 80s, amazingly enough. So, yeah. It's the criminally underrated movie called Rad. It's a story about a young BMX racer who's entering a contest called Hell Track, which apparently happens on the same day as his SATs. Yep, which goes to show you how, how hard it is to actually earn something that will make him become a winner. The first time I saw the movie Rad, I believe it was on HBO when I was a little kid. At this rate, I was, I think I was only uh, three or four years old when I first saw it. Uh, I thought it looks uh, very incredible having to see all these uh, stunts that they use in the film and there was a lot of that and I, I really love uh, everything that made this movie possible and I really love the hell track that they used in the film it was just perfect it was right on cue and it was definitely the perfect uh, sports movie that we ever had back in the 80s. Yeah, because the 80s was very popular back then with all these uh, BMX uh, bikers that we got. And they're still using BMX uh, bikers today. I mean, they're still doing all these stunts. Uh, you see them a lot um, in recent years. You can even see them on YouTube as well. I mean, they've been posting a lot of videos of that. And it just looks uh, very incredible. Um, but not as incredible as, as the movie suggested it. The movie stars Bill Allen with Lori Laughlin from Full House. And she was also in the movie Secret of Meyer. Tyler Shire from The Godfather and Rocky. She's also helped uh, produce the film with her production company along with her husband, Jack Schwartzman. Ray Ralston from the original TV series uh, My Favorite Martian and he was also in the film Fast Times at Richmond High. Alfie Weiss, Jack Weston who was in films like, who later went on to do films like uh, Dirty Dance Scene and Short Circuit 2. Bart Connor who was an Olympic gymnastics champion at the time back in 1984. Marta Kober, Jamie Clark, Laura Jacoby, H.P. Haggerty, with two twins, Chad and Carrie Hayes, and Kelly McQuiggan. It's written by Jeffrey Edwards and Sam Bernard, and it's directed by Hal Neenham who has been best known as a professional stuntman and has directed films like Smokey and the Bandit films as well as the Cannibal Run films. The movie begins where we meet a young BMX racer named Pooh Jones who's played by Bill Allen who also works as a paper boy with his friends for USA Today newspapers. Yeah, running around with his BMX bike, you know, doing all these stunts and trying to throw in the uh, all the papers uh, around the town in order to get there on time perfectly. Anyway, he lives in a small town with his mother, played by Tyler Shire, along with his sister. Crew is basically facing a tough decision by entering a contest called Hail Track, which is sponsored by 7-Eleven and Chief Auto Parts. Yeah, remember that auto parts store? Which is now being bought by AutoZone in the late 90s. Get in the zone! AutoZone! <laughs> yeah, the one you hear radio ads. But not only that, 
His mother wanted him to take his SATs at high school in order for him to enter college. But he ignores uh, his mother's wishes and decided to take the hell track instead, which earns a hundred dollar grand, a new Chevrolet Corvette, and fame and fortune. That means he'll become a star. Um, Hell Track is being endorsed by the city, which is being uh, run by the president of the Federal of American Bicyclists and the owner of Mongoose Bicycles, named Duke Bess, who's played by Jack Weston. But Bess decided to keep adjusting all the rules in order to keep um, crew out of the race and have um, BMX star Bart Taylor instead which would be an easier road to victory for him and he's played by Olympic uh, gymnastic champion uh, Bart Connor yeah, from 1984 but it provides a, a financial windfall for Mongoose bicycle racing so races all around comes to the small town for the hell track and crew meets uh, his love interest Christine Hollings who's played by Lori Laughlin so they both met together in that wonderful scene at the high school dance where they started to do all these stunts together and that's where we get to hear the song uh, send me an angel by real life yeah, that was a great song, by the way. And so instead of dancing like other couples would, they wanted performing all these freestyle BMX stunts that they were doing, and it just looks so amazing the way they shot this. It was perfect. So they really hit the dance floor completely until he ran away. But after being blocked by the race, due to the last minute of rule changes around here, uh, Crew decided to give up his dreams by winning Hell Track by having a participant sponsorship. But that's the problem. He didn't want to deal with that. So in order for him to, to enter the race by having his own sponsor, he offered his sister to actually create all these uh, t-shirts by entering the, the t-shirt business as they're creating all the the style that they need for in order for them to win money and, and enough for him to enter the race which that's when they started creating uh, lines like crude is rad that's right and rat racing they set up the business all this time and it and it actually worked so now he finally enters the race because they knew that Cassine's Bess has been changing all the rules. They said that they had to start up the company by sponsoring the race the racer by only fifteen thousand dollars in order for them. So so as everything has went and goes, Crew had finally entered Tail Track and now he finally gets to race along with uh, his competitor Bart Taylor so now it it becomes uh, one of the biggest races ever you know going around in circles and or, or any other area around even with the trees and it has all these uh, all these long uh, rails and all that everything so he won the track and that was a spoiler right there but that's okay so Bart Taylor quits working with uh, Duke and decided to um, well they decided to race together at the end of the movie <laughs> well or what seems to be <laughs> yeah well, anyway um, I always thought it was a fun film I really thought it was uh, well made well done it definitely has a great soundtrack done by John Farnham. Um, there was a lot of great songs in this movie too that you wouldn't believe. And uh, it, it was so powerful, it, it just works. Uh, I love all these wonderful stunts that they use, especially uh, during all these scenes that they had. Like I know they were doing all these practice scenes where he was trying to 
trying to uh, keep in gear and and actually flies um, as high as he can when he doing that flip in, up in the air uh, with his uh, BMX bike and yeah it, it just looks so beautiful the way they did this I mean the way they did all these stunts this is exactly what a BMX uh, racing the movie really is and I know there have been other ones that followed after this but nothing really uh, competes with this movie and it's such a shame that this movie got negative reviews when it first came out uh, which I'm pretty certain there there were some positives somewhere but we can't seem to find it especially on Rotten Tomatoes which they actually gave it a zero percent I can't believe it I'm sorry man but that's just bullshit in my opinion especially when you know there were other bad films that came out in 86 that are worse than this like Dangerously Close for instance <laughs> exactly now that film would have deserved a zero percent in my opinion I don't know I just I never understand Bill Allen did a great job playing Crew Jones I mean he definitely uh, was born to play that role and it shows because he really loves uh, BMX uh, racing as well I mean he even did his own stunts too I believe and um, I love the chemistry between him and Lori Laughlin. They definitely work together as a team. It really shows. Yeah, even though they had to be dealing with their problems going around, you know, having to having crew entering the race. And I know there's even a scene in the movie where where they both had a fight because of it. And he made it up um, together with um, with Christian by actually uh, showing a, a picture of a panda it even shows uh, the forgiveness that's up there while well, they just had ice cream at a uh, liquor store I, I think it was 7-eleven if oh no no I don't think it was a liquor store I think it was 7-eleven right yeah it was a 7-eleven pretty much or, or any other place it doesn't matter um, at a food store might be 7-Eleven, but who knows. <laughs> but yeah, because they promoted it too. Um, a lot of great scenes with them together. I mean, besides the high school dance scene, was they definitely knew how to do all these stunts. It's really perfect. Very uh, photographed very well. There's even a scene where <laughs> they were like uh, racing together. Uh, everywhere they went and there's even a scene where they actually started to go uh, ass riding <laughs> yeah which is a a water slide all the way down into the river that was a great scene and really shows a lot of great chemistry between the two and no doubt about it Lori Laughlin was very attractive in this movie she's very uh, beautiful and yes she was hot uh, even back in the 80s. <laughs> you know, she's still beautiful today, though, if you see her. Because I know she's now doing that show on the Hallmark Channel called Where the Heart Calls. I think I think that's what the show was called. So, yeah. But it's hard to believe she went on to play uh, Rebecca Donaldson in the TV series Full House, which happens to be uh, Jesse's uh, love interest in... Yep, they both got married. <laughs> yeah, really shows. I always love her too. Yeah, there were some issues where they said that that uh, the race that they did might have been well. There was a nitpick on that where they said that one of the one of the competitors might have cheated. Pretty much, yeah. But I think in the long run, it actually worked. Also, uh, Tyler Shire, yeah, she she looked like she, like everybody else said it, it looked like she didn't want to be in there at all, she did, like she didn't even want to be in the film, which is funny considering that she's the executive producer for the film, a lot, well, even though her name wasn't mentioned in the credits, but her husband, Jack Schwartzman, the 
was the producer for this, and I know he's no longer with us, but when he was around, they actually worked together as a team to release this movie in theaters as a uh, perfect promotion for BMX racing. Well, <laughs> well, a anyway, it, it's and there's some great actors in the movie, like Ray Walston. Uh, I remember that scene where <laughs> yes, he gave the middle finger to uh, Duke Best. <laughs> yeah, it really shows something right there. Or, or any other. <laughs> yeah, Jack Weston definitely plays um, the villain in this movie as the as the president uh, and also the ownership of of Mongoose uh, bicycles. So yeah, he really had to change all the rules and everything for in order for them not to not to enter or anything like that. Or the fact that he's working with him. Which that leads to that problem. I mean, that's how uh, everybody felt. And, well, it happens. Um, uh, also, I, I forgot to mention, there's also one song I definitely like, and I know it's been known for this, but um, there's even a song called Break the Ice. And which definitely works. Uh, it was actually uh, probably the most memorable song in the movie. Which, amazingly enough, they started to uh, use one of uh, John Fardham's songs, uh, and I believe that might be Break the Ice, I could be wrong, in another film called Turbo Kid. And I did actually. Um, Gave that film three stars um, when I did my review, which it looks impressive. I'll give you that. It, I mean, they were going for something in the style of Mad Max and and all these '80s movies, even though it was um, set in 1997. Yeah. And the only thing that really bothers me in the film was that annoying girl. And yes, we begin to find out that she's a robot. Yeah, go figure. Um, but if you like her, that's fine. I, I mean, she is a talented actress, I'll give you that. But I think she'll do better in other films. Um, but anyway, the, I always thought Rad was a great film. I, I thought it was just, um, it was worth watching. I mean, it had problems, yes, but it, it worked. It's just sad that it didn't get much credit deserves, in my opinion. So it's just such a shame. But I really hope that if, if they work things out, though, maybe Sony or any other might be able to have the rights to this film and, and be able to release this officially on DVD and Blu-ray. I don't know when exactly, but let's see what happens. And I know there is a website called RadUniverse.com. It did brought us an unofficial uh, DVD release and, and I think an unofficial Blu-ray release too, which they actually took an HD print that's taken from an HD channel called NHD. I think it was a Canadian uh, HD movie channel, and that's where I found my copy, which I burned into a DVD-R uh, just recently because um, it's probably one one of the rarest copies I ever found. And it definitely looks like a theatrical copy of the film, so seems like it. Uh, but that's the only way we can get it. Um, and I thought the quality looks very good for HD, and it shows. So let's hope someday we'll get one. And they also have the soundtrack, uh, but uh, but unfortunately, uh, they did release it on digital downloads uh, on iTunes for a while. So chances are, it's not going to be easy to find the soundtrack unless you end up finding them at thrift stores like Goodwill or any other. Or maybe getting it on, on eBay if they even have it there. So who knows. Well, anyway, even Bill Allen uh, had a book too uh, where he even talks about the movie on how he did it.
and how he loves uh, BMX racing and all that. Well, and Hal Needham did a great job directing. I mean, he really shows how to direct uh, a movie like this since he's a stuntman himself. He did a lot of stunts uh, in his career. So he's, he definitely knows how to direct all these shots, all these slow-mo shots of, of having all these, um, of all these stunts that, that all these BMX racers have done. It just looks amazing. Very spectacular. Well, anyway, um, but that's my review of Rad, and I give that film four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.